Let's find out who's gonna win the Arcane Adaptation Challenge. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on everybody and welcome to part three, the third and final part of our Arcane Adaptation Challenge. If you guys don't know what this series is, it's a really fun time. Basically, we take a build around card, ask you, our amazing Discord community, link down below, if you would please build some decks that feature very creative ideas around that card. And what we do is we judge these decks based on a one to five point scale for creativity and then three points for a win on each of the three games that we play for a maximum total of eight points. Now, this week we have seen some really, really fun decks. On Monday, we got to see a World Tree deck that pulled out all the gods at once to try and win the game very, very quickly. It was a pretty good deck uh, presented to us by Ace, but it did only get four points. Unfortunately, the creativity wasn't what we expected, maybe, uh, or maybe it wasn't what it was. It was very good. It was just kind of average uh, and unfortunately only got one win, which is just unlucky. The land base was very, very difficult, so it worked out to our favor, I think, as best we could have expected. Breaded and Fried did come in on Wednesday, though, and score one extra point for a total of five with a very interesting and very cool Minotaur build. Uh, the idea was very straightforward. You play the the, uh, was it Warcry and basically get all the Minotaurs out or three Minotaurs out I should say after making everything in your deck a Minotaur and you can win the game instantly very very cool today we have got a very interesting build as well presented to us by Spinner Raptor just so you guys know the winner of these uh, challenges they do receive a proxy pack normally only available to patrons but we like to try and give them out to, to some people who would like them Excuse me, so if you would be interested, please feel free. Submit a deck. Next week we have got Volo. Uh, what's the Guide to Monsters? Is that the name? Yes. Volo Guide to Monsters is the build around card. If you would like to submit a deck, you can do so in the challenge submissions channel in Discord. Without further ado, though, let's go ahead. Let's jump into today's list. All right, guys, before we jump into talking about Spinner Raptor's list here and letting you know what the rating is, I just wanted to go ahead and say if you missed our second part of the mystery crate opening provided to us by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles, please go check that out. That went up yesterday. A really, really, really fun time. Uh, part one was up, I believe, on Tuesday. Both parts were amazing. We got some incredible cards, some really fun stuff that we got to open that we normally wouldn't get to see put together. So a huge thank you to Grand Slam. But we have a giveaway a winner to uh, to announce here, and that is Ryan Hanks. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for commenting on that video. Azika's Chariot was the card that uh, that Ryan really, really liked out of that, which is not necessarily the like highest value card, but is a very, very good one. So Ryan, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who entered uh, and hopefully had a really fun time watching that series, but we will have more of those in the future now. Let's talk about Spinner Raptor's deck. Uh, first and foremost, creativity. Four. We are giving this a creativity point scoring of four. Now, the reason being, uh, for anybody wondering what's more creative about this, sorry, my dog is shaking, uh, for what's more creative about this than the previous list, this has some really clever, like, levels of synergy, not just can we get everything out and win immediately? It certainly can do that, uh, which is pretty awesome. So the idea is to get everything turned into an angel with arcane adaptation. What that does is every time an angel enters the battlefield, we gain four life. Whenever an angel we, angel we control dies, you get a 1-1 white spirit creature token, which also then happens to be an angel, which means we get endless tokens if we can protect Bishop of Wings, essentially. Now, whenever an angel enters the battlefield, not only do we gain a life with Soul Warden, but we also throw a 1-1 counter on Youthful Valkyrie. Uh, we can sacrifice any of our creatures uh, to search our library for a creature with the same uh, type, which they're all angels, is the idea, uh, with equal mana value 1 plus uh, whatever the, the sacrifice creature is, and we can pull that out. Now the idea is to get Scoot Swarm out, which is going to provide us with tons of angels. Uh, Righteous Valkyrie going to gain us some life. Idyllic Tutor is in here to pull out Arcane Adaptation, or 
Cathar's Crusade, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 counter on each creature we control. That can go crazy with Scoot Swarm. Uh, and then, of course, we've got Cultivate, which can trigger the Scoot Swarm or just help ramp us, and Collected Company to get a lot of creatures out very quickly. Very, very sweet deck. Spinner Raptor, uh, I have tested this one a good bit. Uh, and it's really fun. It's a very well put together list. Uh, and again, we think uh, Alex and I are the ones who judge the creativity. We both thought that this was like a slightly higher level of creativity than anybody else's. We're giving it that four. That means to win, you need to get at least two wins. Now, if you get one win and you tie with breaded and fried, you both win. So don't don't worry too much. We should be OK. Uh, but I want to make sure that we give everybody a fair chance. Without further ado, guys, we're going to jump into three games. We're going to have a great time with this list. Let's go ahead and see how it does. All right, and here we are for game number one. Now, this is a bit of a risky keep, very clearly, because we are lacking not only a third land, but a blue mana. But if we can get any third land, we actually have Righteous Valkyrie and then hopefully Coco coming down the line. So I'm going to give this one a shot. We'll see how it works. And there we go, we did it, we got it. Uh, that's perfect, turn one drop, that's gonna allow us to sun petal grove for the Bishop of Wings, uh, which is just absolutely perfect. We couldn't have asked for anything better. So well, let's see what the opponent wants to do here. Interesting, okay, so I'm expecting some sort of like odd combo uh, with something like Mirrodin's Core and Gaia's Blessing. I have to expect that this is gonna be a very, very odd list. Palladian Mirror. Okay, uh, again, very interesting. Um, let's let's go for the arcane adaptation. Uh, I think that now is the time. So we already kind of have a nice little setup here. We've got the Bishop of Wings. We've got the arcane adaptation claiming Angel. Now what we can do next turn is either just play Scoot Swarm and uh, play a land, or we could play a land Collected Company, or we could play land and we just have Righteous Valkyrie coming down as well. We've got plenty of options. Uh, very curious to see what this deck ends up being. Um, very worried about an incoming maybe Ugin. Uh, that could be very challenging, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot. Um, it's gonna gain us four life, obviously, which is great. It just gets us very, very close to that 27 mark, which uh, if you don't know with Righteous Valkyrie, obviously is a very important place. Okay, so there is the Ugin. Very much expected something like this, so that's per perfectly fine. Um, they can kill essentially anything on our field. I'm curious to see what, if anything, no, nothing. Okay. Uh, interesting. I fully expected them to try and kill something here, but that's fine. Uh, let's see what we want to do. So we can Coco. Um, we could also Youthful uh, Valkyrie plus Pyre of Heroes. Uh, I do think I'm going to go for the Coco here. And this might not be the best play because Coco is very resilient to quite a number of other things. Oh, wow. This is really good, though. We're going to gain quite a bit of life. Uh, <laughs> um... That's pretty good. Uh, okay, we are just gonna go ahead and attack the Ugin. The reason being, uh, we do wanna get this down to below that five mark uh, if we can. Now this does have defender and reach, so I guess arguably we should have attacked with the Bishop of Wings as well. Um, but that's okay. That might've been just a misread on my end, so I do apologize. They've got another Skygate here. We do have 50 life though. Um, I mean, worth noting, that's a good bit of life. Okay, so they're going to take out the Righteous Valkyrie. That makes a lot of sense. We do get two one ones in its place, though. They are angels, so we're going to gain quite a bit of life here. <laughs> um, so basically, each angel right now is nine life, uh, which is really solid. <laughs> and these are endless, to be clear. So if they kill one of these, we just get another one back as long as we have the Bishop of Wings. So that's pretty good. Um, all right, let's do this. We're going to go Scoot Swarm. Uh, that's obviously going to gain us quite a bit of life again. Uh, let's do this, which is going to buff stuff up a little bit. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and fetch again to get probably Pyre of Heroes down, honestly. Uh, I think that might be just the best bet. Uh, so that is going to get another Scoot Swarm. <laughs> Uh, Spinner Raptor. This is so sick. Um, I am holding on to the Youthful Valkyrie. It's not a great threat, but it is still a threat. Uh, and so I am gonna hold on to it a little bit here. Um, 
I'm going to attack both into here. They obviously just block one of them, but we are going to get this down to one, and that just keeps managing this a little bit. Um, next turn, we do want to probably get this Cathar's Crusade down, and truthfully, if we get a land, Cathar's Crusade plus land is like kind of sick because of Scoot Swarm. Um, either way, we gain a life here. Uh, that's kind of nice. We're already up to 97 life, which just means that even if they get something crazy down, we should have time... Uh, at the very least, to try and maybe rebuild a little bit or do something like that. So we will see. It looks like they just have a guardian idol, which isn't great for them. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, this isn't ideal, obviously. Um, what we can do is just shoot for a collected company. Uh, alternatively, we can youthful Valkyrie and then maybe sacrifice something with the Pyre of Heroes to get something else out. Uh, not a bad play. Hmm. Or we can just get the Cathars Crusade down and just take that opportunity this turn. Uh, yeah, I think I'm actually going to go that route. The only reason being, I do worry about them having like an Ugin or like a, a different Ugin, um, obviously, uh, or something like that. And I don't particularly want to just lose out to that. Um, they obviously can block one of these again. That's fine. But we are keeping this below that three mark so they can't just blow stuff up. Um, and they truthfully don't have a good value to attacking uh, simply because... I mean, what is it going to do? We've got plenty of life. So uh, I don't think we're in danger there. Cathar's Crusade also sets us up to take out this Ugin uh, this coming turn, which is pretty crucial here. Uh, okay, so they are going to attack. Um, I think, truthfully, we just take it. I'm not particularly worried about this. Uh, I'm not going to block. I don't want to give them these cards, so... Uh, I think blocking and trying to kill something is like kind of a bad idea. Uh, all right, so first things first, let's get Youthful Valkyrie down. That's going to trigger the Cathar, or the Crusade, excuse me. That's going to put counters everywhere, which is great. But not only that, we then get to play land, which is going to trigger Scoot Swarm, <laughs> which is going to trigger the Cathar. <laughs> uh, and this is essentially this deck at its finest i'm going all in here fully understanding that this might be a bad idea um but we're just gonna do it let's get another bishop all right so we're gaining a lot of life uh <laughs> we've got plenty of power now perfect okay that's pretty good <laughs> um all right so uh let's do here Actually, no, 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 no. Let's do these two here. Just guarantees Ugin's dead. Uh, let's attack here. Let's attack here. See, the thing is, if I'm doing this, I kind of just want to win the game. And if we can't win the game, uh, I actually think the safer play is to not... Yeah, I think it's to do this. So here's the deal. If we attack in and one of these cards happens to be Ugin, they get to sweep the board, which I don't want to give them the opportunity to do. Uh, and so if I'm attacking in, I want to win the game immediately. Oh, they didn't block. I still had the Soul Warden attacking. Whoops. Uh, very interesting. Um, so if they happen to have an Ugin, it is what it is, but I feel like that's our best bet. Um, and there's another Coco. Um which I'm just going to play out. <laughs> There's no reason not to. Now here, obviously, oh, wow. Okay, that's really good. Um, obviously, the play is to attack. Uh, and Spinner Raptor, I think this is pretty much a guaranteed win. Um, <laughs> holy crap. Uh, yeah, we're just we're just going to go ahead and get a, little, get a little swingy. Get a little swingy. I mean, Spinner Raptor, I can't believe it worked that well off the bat. Oh, no! Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Sure, they had a haze of pollen and nothing we can do about that. That's hilarious. Um, fair enough. Uh, but we still have 223 life. So uh, they really I mean, if they have the spirit dragon, we are in terrible shape uh, because not terrible. We still have a lot of life, but it will take us a while to rebuild. All right, uh, let's attack in. 
if they have a haze of pollen they gotta use it again um which is fine yep that's fair uh that's frustrating it is what it is i mean you can't do anything about it right all right so we're gonna do this this is gonna create a lot more <laughs> stuff uh this is insane spinner after i love that this works um and that we got to see it work uh let's do it again <laughs> Might as well, right? I mean, there's no there's no reason not to at this point. Uh, we'll just get a blue source. Doesn't really matter. Now we could sacrifice a creature with the Pyre of Heroes. Um, there's a creature type. Okay, but I don't actually think that we need to. Um, we have so much life. This is insane. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love this. I love this a lot. Spinner Raptor, you uh you made me very happy with this list. Um did we bog it down? Is that what's going on? <sighs> we must have. Um yeah, even if they attack, we're still not gonna be blocking because we're not giving them cards. Uh so we just pass. So when this dies, exile the uh, when that token leaves the battlefield, put the exile card in your hand. Right. So that's why we don't want to. Okay. Whoo, we did it. All right, Spinner Raptor, that is a game win, my friend. That is starting off strong. Let's go ahead. We'll jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And again, this is a pretty strong keep. We're going to give this one a shot. Probably going to go ahead and fetch up. Oh, truthfully, we kind of need a white source, don't we? Um... Maybe we'll wait on the uh, Fabled Passage then, and we'll see how this goes. To uh, to be very clear, Spinner Raptor, if we get one more win, you actually take the win. Uh, that being said, if we don't get another win, uh, you do still tie with Brandon and Fried, who, uh, in that case, you both then obviously win. Uh, let's see what the opponent's going to do. It looks just like elves, yeah. Um, which is a bit scary, not going to lie, especially when you don't draw another land. Uh... Other than Fable Passage, which isn't bad, but it's obviously not exactly what we're looking for here. Uh, let's go ahead and grab that blue source. That's going to give us Arcane Adaptation. And then next turn, of course, we do just have Cultivate if we need it. So uh, we'll see how this one goes, but I'm hopeful. Uh, Elves is a very tricky one, though. I mean, truth be told, they could do a lot. Uh, unfortunately for them, it looks like they didn't have very much there. Uh, that's kind of interesting. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity since they didn't play anything uh, and just name Angel here. This is going to set us up for theoretically a good amount of life gain plus blocking, uh, which we're obviously going to need against the, the Elves deck. Um, there's not really a good way around it other than just to block like crazy and hopefully gain a lot of life. Uh, wow. Okay, that's very scary. Um, yeah, they're gonna create another token. This uh, this Elven Ambush is a very sick card. Uh, very cool indeed. Interesting, okay. Um, I think we just save as much damage as we can right now. We're gonna theoretically be gaining quite a bit of life here, uh, which is great. Yeah, let's just do this. This is going to gain eight life um, and also give us a very good threat to block with. So they do need like another Lord to be able to really get a solid attack in. Um, and we also just now have a lot of blockers. So we'll see. I'm worried. Yep, there's the crater hoof. That's what I was worried about. Uh, and unfortunately, I think that just means we're dead. Uh, so <laughs> sad day. Oh, that's so sad. Um, I mean, we block as much as we can, but we're dead. All right, uh, Spinner Raptor, that is a loss, my friend. So it all comes down to this final game. Let's see if you can do it. And here we are, guys. This is our third and final game. Now, unfortunately, I don't actually think we can keep this hand. As great as Scoot Swarm is, we don't have any turn two. Uh, now, this is a good bit better. It's not perfect, but it does give us some plays at the very least. Um, uh, it's still not great to be brutally honest, but we're gonna do the best we can. Let's go ahead and do this We're gonna lead on the hollowed fountain naturally uh, and see what the opponents got in store for us uh, all right 
The one thing I will say, uh, Spinaraptor, and I didn't actually count the lands, I don't think it's a problem. I think it's a problem with, like, the Shuffler even, um, is I kept having issues every once in a while with lands, <clears throat> which shouldn't be a problem this game. It's not that. It's just that we've got so many turn three plays. Uh, it's very, very stacked in the three drop slot um, that I think it does become slightly problematic in uh, certain situations. All that to say... Uh, I don't think it's that big of a problem, and certainly we'll do the best we can to get around it. Anyway, we do have Coco coming up here, which is going to be great. Uh, now, they did not attack in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fetch here, uh, and potentially we'll see how we want to do this. I think we're actually just going to pass. Uh, reason being, we can Coco and then potentially block the Witch. Uh, which I think is probably worth it, but we can't currently. So they may be baited into an attack here. Um, if they're clever and play a lot of historic, they may not. Uh, it looks like they're going to do it, though. They may also have a sweeper, worth noting, um, but we're going to give it a shot. There's a scoot swarm. <laughs> That's not ideal. Um, with that in mind, we're just going to go ahead and take out this little 1-1 here. I uh, was hoping to hit another creature, like at least two creatures, because then we could have easily blocked the witch, but... It's okay, we didn't get there. Uh, we do have a backup Coco, though, so there's some positive notes there. All right. Uh, this is very good for the opponent, um, for sure. But they didn't win yet. Yet is the keyword. Spinner after, we might have a, a bit of a rough time against this one, but we're going to do the best we can. They've got so many removal spells, I'm sure, in their deck. Uh, Lash of Malice. Not a card I expected to see, but it's a very good one. Okay. Let's do this. Um, I think we just pass. I mean, I think we pull the same trick twice. Uh, chances are this time they will see it coming. Not that they didn't last time, but uh, hopefully we have a little bit of a better hit this time. <laughs> uh, a lone scoot swarm is not necessarily ideal. They're going to gain a lot of life here. Uh, resolve. Um, so they create just tons of these little pests and then, yeah, that's a very good little combo. So this is the Witherbloom combo deck that we've seen before. Granted, this is a mono black version, uh, which is interesting uh normally don't see mono black but it is very good still so can't complain uh we're gonna coco now uh because if we do hit some creatures we at least gain some life oh my gosh the worst coco hits i think i've ever seen <laughs> um aside from just straight whiffs uh we are only getting one creature and they're not the best creatures of amanus so that's a little unfortunate um they're going to have another removal spell for us here. And I think they're going to take us down, unfortunately. Uh, we do get to draw a card because they didn't pay the full price there. That's interesting that they didn't. Uh, I guess they're leaving up... Well, no, they're not. But they were leaving up another uh, draw spell there, but it looks like they are not. Is it Plume the Plum the Forbidden? Whatever it is, it's the Forbidden. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, there's not much else we can do. This is very much a loss for us which does mean i think for the first time ever spinner after and breaded and fried we've got a tie guys this doesn't happen this has never happened before but i'm all too happy to uh send out some proxies that means they win guys i can't believe it um wow all right uh i'm gonna go ahead and concede let's chat about your deck spinner after all right, so for the first time in these challenge weeks, which we've been doing them for a little while now, so this is pretty surprising, uh, we have gotten our first tie. So Breaded and Fried and Spinaraptor, congratulations, both of you ending the week with a total of five points. Breaded and Fried, again, that Minotaur deck, very, very sweet with that instant win. And then Spinaraptor, of course, hanging in there pretty well with Angels, but didn't get the wins I was kind of expecting uh, that we would get. But regardless, a very, very, very fun week. Guys, reminder, next week is Volo week. Please make sure you build around that one. Give us some creative builds. I'm excited to see what you guys can come up with. And congratulations again to our winners. Cannot wait to jump back into this. Have a fantastic weekend, guys. I'll see you on Monday for the Volo Challenge Week.
What's going on guys? If you enjoyed this video and would love to check out some more, please make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you get notified whenever we have a new video posted.